Well, good morning. Welcome to a Tail Three Cabin. It's uh, been pretty warm here the last couple of weeks, and uh, it's a, bit, a little hard for me to do some projects lately. So I'm going to continue with a little series I started on the origins on uh, our log home here. So it's going to be part two. If you remember part one, if you watched it, it ended with the logs being delivered, um, some foundation issues, some driveway issues. Um, but come check it out. So my logs were delivered. I'm at the mercy of the foundation guys right now. Um, I can't start anything until they're done. They're behind. I still have my logs and all my materials kind of stacked down the driveway and around the house. They're starting to pick up speed here. They've dedicated some more guys to the project, so I'm a little pleased about that. Um, my basement, the typical basement in our area is usually 11 courses a block. I went with 13, so if I had any uh, ductwork or anything in the basement, I would still have an 8-foot ceiling. It is a little depressing waiting for them guys to finish so we can start moving here. I'm a little anxious. I want to get things started. I have a certain time frame of time off from work and I'm pretty much just twiddling my thumbs waiting on these guys. So I'm to a point where I can at least start working on the sill plate, feel like I'm doing something even though they're still working around me. Um, they're going to finish the foundation for the house. They're still going to have to work on the garage foundation, a sunroom in the back, and a breezeway foundation. But at least I can start getting things started a little bit here, start preparing for the subfloor. The one bad thing is that um, since the foundation is so fresh, they don't want to backfill. So everything coming in here, all the materials are going to have to be carried on a little gangplank. And um, it just makes it a little bit harder. You can't bring everything right up to the edge of the house. I want to make a little comment about my floor joists. Um, it was new technology at the time, and they're called engineered I-beams, and they use less lumber, they're stronger, and they are. Um, but if I had to do it again, I think I would use solid 2x10s two by, two by for my joists. Um, these got weathered quite a bit, and the weather kind of beats on them and weakened them, so um, me building it myself, things were going to be left in the open longer than a typical uh, construction crew would have. Now here I'm cutting out pockets around the perimeter of the house and this is for the log walls. Basically there's going to be threaded rod that's going to go all the way from the basement all the way up to the roof line um, and that's going to be contained inside the logs and there's going to be a nut on the base here and it's going to be used to help with settling in the future. So early on, about once a month, once the house is done, I'll go around and I'll crank down on all these nuts and it'll actually lower the house or shrink the house by about two to three inches. So getting the subfloor in, it's going to go pretty quick here. 
Um, one thing that's going to happen that's pretty much going to happen throughout this build in the summertime is that um, pretty much around 3 o'clock in the afternoon we're going to get a pretty good thunderstorm that comes through and right after I weather sealed that floor sure enough we got a rainstorm right around 3 o'clock. That's water that's actually being pumped out of my sump pump in the basement right now, even before there's any roof or anything up. first course of logs here is probably takes the longest just to make sure everything's square because you want to make sure from that point on that um, it's all going to stay lined up. So once you get the first course in, the other ones go by pretty fast. These braces are put in to um, keep the wall straight as you're going up because the rods aren't in yet and they're going to come in a little bit later. The logs that I went with have a double tongue and groove, two tongues on the top and two grooves on the bottom, and they are sealed with uh, two rows of gaskets. So as I said, the first floor goes up pretty quick and then once you get to the second floor part you have to start accounting for where your wiring is going to go, if you're going to have uh, certain fixtures in the ceiling, you have to pre-wire that ahead of time. And then we start carving out notches to put these joists in and it just uh, slows the whole project down quite a bit. So. Hurry up, it's lunch time. <laughs> One more, we go to lunch. Two more holes. Two more. Oh. That's it. Okay. Just assume drill them. Yeah. You don't mind. So the second floor flooring is in, and things are going to start picking up again to get these log wall ends done. So you can see some of the Romex hanging there, and typically when you built a normal house, uh, conventional house that you would just have a rough in and then your electrician would come in but as the project goes you have to put your wiring in kind of as you go and get creative where you're going to route it. So during the course of us putting up the logs uh, the masonry guys did come back and finish the foundation for the basement but they still have some foundation work to do. Breezeway and a sunroom. So they're here to backfill. So it's been uh, probably close to three, four weeks, and we got a good part of the structure up already. 
and we've been walking that gangplank and finally we're going to have some dirt coming right up to our foundation. So I'm working on the last log and this will get fastened in and then we'll put some straight edges up there and take a chainsaw and cut our um, proper roof lines. So things have slowed down on the second floor just in those joists and they're really going to slow down putting the roof system in. Um, all those angles, doghouse dormers, um, it's really going to take some time. We took a whole week just to cut the angles on our roof rafters and then we're going to get a bunch of guys here on a weekend and put up our heaviest piece of wood. Yeah. Well, let's get that one out. It's documented as of now. 20 days here. 20 days in the hole. Uh, we're gonna set something here, though. We're you gonna turn this one lengthways, or what was? Whoa. Got it. I want my snapple. So that ridge beam was by far the heaviest piece of wood in this house. So with the extra manpower for the weekend here, we're going to try to get up all the roof joists. We determined that we had enough lumber to put a nice shed dormer on the back here. Originally it just called for a small one for one of the bedrooms, maybe about 12 feet wide. But we were able to use um, almost the whole length of the house, which added a lot more headroom upstairs on the second floor. So we finished the rafters that weekend and then we spent the next couple days during the week here getting the tongue and groove up, fastening everything together on the inside. We still have to put together the doghouse dormers which is going to be time consuming with those angles also.
Got the porch system in and the tongue and groove laid out on there. Made it a little bit nicer. Had a platform to stand on with the porch there now. And we're getting ready to put in the insulation for the roof. So the roof is going to be pretty thick. It's going to be a lot of layers to it. So we start with the tongue and groove that's laid down and that's what you see on the inside when you're looking at the ceiling. And then um, there's rigid foam, sheets of foam, 4 by 8 feet and it's 4 inches thick and it's supposed to be an R30 value. On top of that these 2 by 4s serve as a little spacer and um, it's cut in a way to let air circulate through it. And then on top of the 2x4s will go your sheeting and then your standard roof, so your tar paper and whatever type of roof you pick. I don't know if I like this system now after having it for so many years. That air gap leaves a place for critters to get up there, mostly mice, sometimes bats. They don't really get into the house per se, but um, you do hear them chewing on the insulation sometimes and it's just uh, a little bit of a nuisance sometimes to try to keep them from getting in there. So I'm at a point where the logs have been up for a little while. They've been weathered a little bit and uh, we're going to stain it. It'll be easier to stain now than when the windows and everything are in. So um, my only problem was getting some water here and I ended up getting about a thousand feet of garden hose and taking it to my nearest neighbor and uh, actually the pressure was pretty good. I'm a little uh, upset that I spent more money on putting an inch and a half water line when I could have got away with an inch copper line. So getting ready for some of the partition walls. So basically a 4x4 uh, a four four is going to go against this log wall. And uh, what I'm doing here is notching out um, for whatever you're going to use for your wall covering, whether it's going to be drywall or tongue and groove. So that basically is like the start of your first stud. And your drywall would just slide right in that groove. Then if you notice the slots in that 4x4, four four, that's to keep um, the logs from binding up so they can settle freely and uh, what I attach it to will just slide through those slots. So again you got to be kind of creative with your wiring and, and plan ahead. Um, also when it comes to the duct work you're going to have to get a little creative too on how you want to heat and cool your house. So this is going to be the end of part two and we'll pick up again sometime in the future with a part three and uh, you know show you how we finished the house and maybe some of the mistakes I made or things that I um, regretted doing but um, next project is probably going to be back to the tractor and we'll be working outside again I appreciate everybody watching hopefully you subscribe and uh, keep an eye on us